Woo! What's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> I forgot I had a show today, but I'm going to give you a show. Uh, unfortunately, I'm driving, so no music today. How's everybody doing? Mm-mm-mm. Hopefully you are doing fine like mine. Fine like mine. Oh, yeah, y'all driving with me today. We're going to take a trip in our little rocket ship, baby. Mm. Been out all goddamn day, need to shower. Mm. Got to go to my boy Ali's little party. Later tonight. Go out there and buy some exo cognac. So would y'all like to take a ride to me when I go to one store, the liquor store, then go all the way to the cigar shop? Would you like to? I know you want to. See, I'm going to teach you how to buy cigars and great liquor, okay? But first, like, share, subscribe. <laughs> but I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about this subject while we're driving and uh taking a trip in our little rocket ship. Um I keep hearing the notion of leadership and money will make the women come back, back to you and become submissive. And the answer is hell and no, folks. How many times does the media have to show you this shit? Really? Really? How many times? If you don't understand it, look at Jada Pickett Smith, the fellow Baltimorean. <laughs> I like your monologues, by the way. <laughs> You all got a monologue, baby. <laughs> so you got a monologue like the like the Mac Dream, baby. You gotta you gotta be able to talk to the people. You gotta reach out and talk to the people. Mm. See, I was listening to Shannon's show, and I heard a dude talk about this leadership, this money. Why does? Everything got to be pertinent on you and predicated on you to get another chick to listen. That's another human being with a damn brain, okay? You may never get that person to listen, okay? You may never get them to listen. Make your peace with that shit. These women would rather live in their own fucking project apartment than to be in a mansion with you. And I don't think it's all women, but majority of them are like that. They live to be combative, man. You ever seen a creature that lives for that shit? They live for that. You can't tell me, well, if I get enough money, if I if I show some leadership. Really? How is that working for you? How is that working for you? So if you don't want to tell me or you can't prove to me, that it hasn't, why are you telling everybody else? A man should make money to take care of his dreams, his lifestyle, his survival. You can't do it predicated on a woman. Sorry. Sorry. A lot of you fools keep, keep saying this fucking notion about uh, we need to get more money. Because these chicks out here, if we show leadership and money, they're going to bow down. They're going to be submissive. You have men who taking in other men's children. You have men who made 
hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, millions a year, billions, and you still are getting the same results all throughout the octane levels or the classes. Sorry. You cannot say your amount of money. That person should respect you before you make or show a red cent. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't get why brothers out there keep telling you bullshit. And I do mean bullshit statements about money. And the requirements of such. Your women got such an advantage when it comes to welfare, Section 8, food stamps, by just having one child, then you making $75,000 a year. She's basically getting anywhere from seventy-five dollars to $100,000 in benefits. And she doesn't have to answer to you. How are you going to defeat that? Well, uh, from, from masculine, uh, go ahead, show it. Go ahead. Well, uh, uh, I got my masculinity. I show my leadership. There's a term in the military, police department, or any paramilitary organization. It's called insubordination. Some people are just not going to listen. Some people are just not gonna gonna give a damn. What do they say? Can't be reasoned with, can't be bargained with. You're trying to bargain with and reason with the unreasonable. Many of these chicks will happily live by themselves in their own houses, whether bought or rented. To liberate herself from you. Well, would, give give her a good damn reason that she should listen to you when the government incentivizes her not to. Is that all? No. No. That's why I keep telling you get women that are going to be a part of your program. If not, you're constantly trying to roll up shit's creek. And when you row up Shit's Creek <laughs> without a paddle, you're usually not going to like the results of it. Usually not. Well, you either find new women or just find women that's on your program. Or don't mess with them at all. Sometimes the greatest reversal is never to be put in a hold in the first place. If you avoid the consequences of this shit, guess what? <coughs> Excuse me. You'll be okay. If you're looking for a wife or girlfriend, you better vet the hell out of her. If it's somebody you just smashing and that's all y'all got, you better protect yourself at all times. <laughs> you better come in there and protect yourself at all times. Baltimore, what it do? Schools me, schools me. That's how the that's how the niggas on the corner be saying schools me. Hey girl, schools me. <laughs> but there's an issue that I'm starting to see that you're getting all these people coming into the ministry of space talking about leadership. What does a leader have? When he's leading his troops, what does a leader have when he's leading his congregation? 
a leader, number one, must have the ability to reward and punish. What say ye? Do you have the ability to reward and punish your women? And the answer will be, yeah, you, you fucked up. Fucking stop sign, you jackass. You don't even have those abilities. You know, there's too many niggas out there capping like a bitch. Stating that, oh, uh, I'm the leader of my woman. No. What did, what did BGS even say? Like, even Monaghan said, look, these marriages are not marriages out of love. They're not marriages to, to create legacy. It's just a marriage of convenience. Because I can't survive on my own, I'm going to marry this nigga, but I'm going to still sabotage him on the low. got to tell the truth. Shame the devil. I don't... I remember I was asked, should a woman love you for you or for your money? She should love me for everything I do. She should love me for everything what I am to my cellular or atomic subatomic structure. Okay. She should love you for multiple fucking reasons. The minute, and I do mean the minute you have anything out there as a singular object of her desire. It is easy for her to fall out of love. When you only have one thing that she likes about you, which is your money, your dick, she could fall out of there. I don't care what you say. So easy. So easy. Now you now a lot of you probably understand now why do the the six figure niggas date the girls who probably work at Walmart? Because he can actually impress her. He can actually show her things she never did on her own. No man wants to be with a woman who seen it all, done it all. There's nothing new. Oh, I already been to Greece with my girlfriends. What the fuck can I do with you? It was that one brother telling BGS, well, you know, I, I think that if, you know, if I, if I maintain my leadership role, what is your leadership role in this community? What does the woman always say in this community? I allow him to lead me. I allow him to lead me. Does that sound like submission to you? Notice, when somebody tells you, I allowed you to lead me, you're not really the one who's in control. You're not the one who's calling all the shots. You want to test your authority? Go into an organization and say something totally contrary to their beliefs, to their uh, to their motto, to their stance, and watch the fur fly. Watch everybody take watch everybody take offense, open up their mouths, and you'll see how much of a leader you truly were. Mm-hmm. Watch your authority or so-called authority dwindle. Watch her do everything in her power to sabotage you. And that's for the women who choose to be rebellious. I don't know why, oh why, we still got people in this space when we have proof at the proof, evidence at the evidence, case study at the case study, that money <laughs> does not matter. It's only what matters to her. Okay? Only what matters to her. Well, that's not true, Austin Fulton. You know she said she loved me. Have y'all went through a bad moment? 
or a bad time together, no, then you don't know if she really loves you yet. There are some people who can't handle bad moments. Oh, yeah, that Jezebel. Mm. We're going to talk about that Jezebel spirit. That woman who rebellious, who's conniving, who's mischievous, deceitful. The whore of Babylon. Think about it. Some of these ladies y'all mess with, man, probably got more abortions than Jordan got rings. And and, and I'm and I'm gonna see like if you wanted a child and she doesn't want it, and there's a tug and pull, who do you think's gonna win that? I challenge any man. Married or unmarried. Go ahead. The ultimate tug and pull. I want I want the kid. I don't want it. I want the kid. I don't want it. And who is going to punish her for having an abortion? Who is going to punish her for having an abortion, which your child, even though you want the child, the decision always falls upon her. If you're that much of a man with this leadership and authority, by your words alone, should things be dictated. <laughs> right? By your words alone, things should be dictated one way and not her way. But I get all these married guys, these hopeful family men who don't live in reality to tell me that I, I can alpha just because of my presence. I, I proved that. It, no, 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 no. It's always convenience. See, when you study female behavior, a lot of times you got to understand Unless that female is really down for you and you will actually understand what she's down for you. Look, she could change her fucking attitude towards you in the wind. One minute she loves you. Next minute she can't stand you. That's part of my expertise, you know. <laughs> and shame on people for not telling people the truth. Shame on you. There is no goddamn way you should be telling people that all you need to do is alpha or buy her something better and bigger. and You're just setting up people to be simps. You're just setting up people to be simps. And eh, fuck the Bengals. I'm going to fuck you up when we see you again. Anyway. You got to you got to analyze things. And you always have to have a purpose for that woman in your life. Because a lot of people just have women just dragging along. You must not, you must now and forever always have a purpose for that woman. I don't care if it's just sexual. I don't care if it's just talking. I don't care if it's relationship, business, something. Networking. You must do something. For me to benefit this man that you hold so tight is not a one-way giver. Sorry. What's up, Jay Sean? Wu Tang, nigga. Wu Tang. You gotta stop trying to appease people. They don't give a rat's ass nor shit about you. A sucker is born every minute. Just don't be yours, okay? If you're gonna if you're gonna put yourself in a bind, put yourself in a bind that's actually worthy of it.
somebody you know you can trust when the chips are down. That that the nerve of some niggas, man. Trusting these bruds out of nowhere. Oh, uh, I'm gonna make her submit because I make X amount of money. Uh, I have all this type going for me. Yeah, and guess what? That lady can be using you for a mark. I'm not going to say that's all women, but um, can you tell which ones? Can you truly tell? The whole, the whole time, you putting out money towards your family. You putting out money towards your lady. And she could be making her exit strategy. That's what I call you a walking retirement plan, baby. A walking retirement plan. You don't want to be anybody's retirement plan. Tell you what. How you doing? Hey, how you doing? Oh, man. That's nice. Can I get this one? Uh, making a few stops while we're here. Abortion, child support, alimony, the majority of the time is against a man. Of course. Of course. The more, my man, K Ron said, make demands on that woman, employ her, put her to work. If she bucks up, fire her. She has the best benefit package in the world. You. <laughs> See, he said, just like the Baltimore Ravens. Oh, yeah. It took you a while to beat us. What was it, like five years? <laughs> All these Johnny Come Lumblies only had one thing to say. Oh, we beat you. And they won't even make the playoffs. Mm, mm, Up. Nice necklace over there. Uh, I mean, <laughs> he lets you shine. Yeah, Kansas City. Uh, boy, Kansas City got exposed big time this year. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you, a lot of y'all brothers out there do not put any. Anything on them women, man. Not a lot is going to be risk. Not a lot is going to be said. You're just going to be with a woman nilly-willy with no purpose. You're going to be just like them. Oh, I'm going to... I'm going to alpha my way out of this shit type niggas. How's that working for you? Oh man, gonna like those alpha your ways. Hey, I like that shit. Hey, I like that. See that? Like that. A woman can do no wrong. You got damn right. <laughs> Until she does wrong. <laughs> yeah, Iman Perry. Yeah, that AFC race is tight as. Oh, my bad. That, that AFC race is tight as hell. He said Kansas City. (laughs) 
Okay. Why do you come in here with that troll shit, man? See, you know that's a lie, because guess what? If a woman likes you, she likes you. If a woman needs you, she needs you. If a woman's going to use you, she's going to use you. That's the difference between men and women. She's not going to have any com any compulsions against that. You got these guys talking about, yeah, I get I, I make this much money. She's going to submit to me. And all she's going to do is, uh, <laughs> not yet. I'm just waiting my turn. Um, about to go get some cognac next. Take you on a trip. Then after the cognac. Hey, speaking of our lovely ladies, look at this one. Miss Grammar Bully. Goddamn Grammar Bully, man. I'm going to send you to England where you're going to correct everybody. <laughs> I keep hearing all this thing about, well, I need to alpha my way out of stuff. Not everybody's going to make $100,000, sorry. It's impossible. Hmm. What, Red? Shout out to Liverpool. <laughs> Mm, he said, "I'm looking like <laughs> looking like the first black Buffett." See, I ain't gonna tell you. I ain't gonna tell T. T. Riddle secret that he wears baggy lifestyles. Anyway, <laughs> I'm not gonna talk about him wearing baggy ass lifestyles. Oh man, I gotta shave my head tonight. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Bad chesty. I see. I like some of these watches. Oh, man. My woman's going to bow down to me because. She knows who makes the money. And she knows who's going to get the money when they call the law. <laughs> She's never going to keep my kids away from me until she gets full custody. <laughs> yep, Boiling Blood, Toby Rama, Realism, Hasha Rama, Idealism. I mean, you need a little bit of both. That's why um, they were key for Konoha. You needed the idealism because idealism brings you up to the height of what you need to be made. But realism keeps you grounded. Like, can we really do this shit? <laughs> do we need to do this shit? Should we do this shit? We have to do this shit. That's realism. But at the same time, you get a lot of these people who, unfortunately, um, it's going to take something dramatic for it to hit them hard. And when you get that red pill awareness, you're going to see things going. It's like I tell women, I'm like, how do I, know, how do you know if a man really, really down for you or he loves you? Tell him that you have a pregnant, that you might be pregnant. You'll see the real him come out real quick. And people always say, what's the equivalent for men? Tell her you just lost your job. Tell that woman you just lost your job. And you'll see how she reacts. She's either going to do two things. She's either going to back away from you or she's going to get, get tighter around you. She's going to support you. Or she's going to be like exit stage left.
even small percentage of good women know that they can turn on men if they choose. So, I mean, that's <laughs> that's going to be telling you lost all your money in crypto. Oh, shit. <laughs> totally agree with me. Yep. Yep. She gonna f follow that dude hitting that bar. Never beg a woman for shit. Exactly. See, you gotta be at your lowest. Like lose your job, lose your car. Tell it. Tell her that you had a car accident. Your car's total. See what type of person she is. You know, don't forget to hit that cash app because I'm giving y'all game. Just like I give women game. Be at your bottom and you'll see everybody who's around you. Not just the women, but also your friends. Also your friends. You want to know who your friends are? Go through some shit. You'll learn very quickly who your friends are. I want y'all to put this in the chat. The three people in life you'll always learn. Yep. It's the people, number one, the people who stuck by you in hard times, the people who moved away from you during hard times, and the people who left you during hard times. Yep. Uh, we already tried this on, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. How much is the bracelet? Yeah. Okay. All right. I get both. Sorry. I like silver. <laughs> and it's heavy as hell. So. When are you going to turn on the super chat? When, when fucking YouTube <laughs> gives me the damn super chat. Every time I come for it, they, they never give me no nay or say. I'm going to try it again at the computer just again and see what's going on. <laughs> you could act like Professor Farnsworth. Oh, Oh, fooey. Uh, what did I say again? <laughs> but yeah. Lot, do you ever notice when you hear a lot of these dudes who profess their money? They never say they had a requirement for their wife or girlfriend. As a matter of fact, they never had a requirement for many people in life. They buy their loyalty instead of making people earn their loyalty. That's pretty shameful. We get these guys who think that my word is it's like the law of God and the, and she'll listen to anything I say. And we have case after case. Oh, thank you. We have study after study. I tell you otherwise. And for some odd reason, nobody wants to realize that the entire time, you've been pretty much just bullshitting yourself. Uh, thank you. You too.
Okay. <sighs> Off to the con yet. A lot of times you got to go out there. Probably take my mask off. A lot of times you got to go out there and take that journey called life. And enjoy your goddamn self. Stop putting all your faith in other people. Hmm, Samuel McFadden. Good day, good day. Hmm. See, I'm not against marriage if it's practical. If you're going to build generations of good children and raise them as proper adults, more successful than you. What I get upset about is that you're preaching to guys about not you, oh, excuse me, not you, son, is hot, raw. But I get upset about when dudes don't really be honest out there and state how fucked up a marriage can be if one slips up. If you slip up or fuck up in your marriage, And you build all this wealth without vetting her first. It's going to be catastrophic. Look at homeboy who was with Brittany Rainer. All he seen was a cute face, a fat ass. And she knew since he went to college that she was going to be in that nigga's pockets. She knew. I, you know what I would have told him? Telling you, telling you about to get cut from the team, and you would have seen the real her. You would have seen the real her. And see, I've been around really uber pretty women. You know what the problem with a lot of these uber pretty women are? They have more self esteem issues than a little bit, and these are bona fide in eight, nines, and tens. Hell, even the sevens, they got these, they got to wear too much makeup. They got to always get the acknowledgement. I'm not sure. I don't think you like me. I'm like, shorty, you bad as a motherfucker. What is fucking wrong with you? But when you look at the women's psyche, nothing matters beyond what she perceives. I'm going to tell you men this game again. Nothing matters beyond which she perceives perceives in her mind if she sees you as a nerd or as a geek she's going to damn near always see you as such she can't get over that that's her brain will not allow her to see you as a comparable man that whole Laura Winslow Steve Urkel dynamic you're not going to get married and if you do it's because she already thought and reproduce with a bunch of dudes anyway. Hmm. That's where I st- that's where it starts. Seven up. Yeah. You gotta you gotta really take in consideration, man. That you think you got it hard. Imagine being pretty all the time. Oh, yeah, by the way, we're going into the uh, liquor emporium. Don't judge me. Uh, And if you do, fuck you twice. Uh, Only y'all can judge me. And he said, pour it up. (laughs) Got to get that yak. Ah, Wells Discount Liquors. A party without alcohol. Remember, a party without alcohol is just a meeting. Yeah, you got a... (laughs) You got a lot of people 
who don't understand it. Make something up with your life. Hey. Hey, dog. Ooh. What does that say? Ooh, Martel. <laughs> All the bang for your buck. Martel. <sighs> oh, you got Martel Blue Swift. <sighs> Damn it, I still got a. Huh. <laughs> Ooh. 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 Oh my god, that shit is 92 proof. Oh my god, that is that'll fuck you up. Oh the Hardy's pretty good too. This brand Hardy is a pretty good cognac for all you drinkers. But this here, that right there. I'll do Daniels over here, kid. <laughs> right there. Oh, man, I got to get a goddamn card. What's up, old timer? What's up, old timer young man? Hey, I don't recognize with all that stuff, man. You look like a telephone operator. <laughs> hey, how you feeling? Hey, man, how you doing? Uh, uh, putting... Putting right and everything? About to, I just put in my packet for my disability. Did you? Good, good. I, said, Fuck this. I said, December, I'll be out. I said, you've been out a while, right? Yep, I put in my packet today for my disability. Okay. So, you know, it's just like they don't make it any easier. Oh yeah, oh yeah. This this they my talk guy. About retention, but this how is are they this is one of my YouTube channels. What's up? How many, Wells how many? Liquors? Huh? Red Wells Liquors. <laughs> Wells Liquors, baby. <laughs> Gotta love Wells Liquors. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how long have you been retired now? Uh, 2004. <sighs> but I've been here almost 30 years. I started here. In 82. We were actually. Well, while we started here, they were allowed us in uniform. Because I work flex, Ooh. and I have my own radio, of course. So we were we were allowed to wear uniform radio. And then when Frazier got here, he pulled everybody out. Couldn't even work clubs. Mm. And then when Norris came, he reversed it and said we work liquor store. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I don't see what the problem is as long as you're not drinking. Uh, yeah, I agree. Fra that was Frazier. You know, he was kind of cool. <laughs> That's yeah. I like sat here all those thirty years, loving the life. So. My brother just retired in June. And he was down headquarters. The same thing. He loved it, but they were detailing him out every weekend. Oh yeah, they get detailed. They get detailed. They get detailed all the time. Yeah. I uh, said, "Wait a minute, I'm injured. Give me them papers." Uh, they they won't let you get overtime, but they detail everybody. Like I said, they say it's funny because they talk about we got to retain our guys, but then they keep doing stupid crap. The they're trying to get rid. They're trying to get rid of people. They'll charge they can't you. To hire death. Anybody. They'll charge you to death or they'll get rid of you. Well, I hope it works out for you, brother. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Get the fly. Yeah. It's always good to see. Hey, it's Professor Goodbar, a.k.a. Tigra, to the Panther. Hey, Professor. Get some of that blue swift. Give me a little bit of this. A little bit of that. And, ooh, 10 generations. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. 
Oh, man. I told you I was going to do a, uh, <laughs> a liquor and cigar. Um, what is it called? Taste testing. Now we're going over to Scotch. You gotta talk like Sean Quartery when you drink this shit. Somebody get BGS. <laughs> oh, here, here we go. The McCulloch, the Glenlivet. Hmm. Should we fifteen year? Should we get the fifteen? I'm flirting with the taxpayers' dollars. <laughs> I'm a taxpayer too, so I'm splurging my old damn shit. Ooh, single malt. I'm getting 15. So you said, pick me up some Uncle Nearest. Oh, Jesus. If you're drinking that old Uncle Nearest, so this is what we got so far. Uh, man, the cat make it happen. Oh, here's your whiskeys. <laughs> if you're going to get Jack, at least get Gentleman's Jack. Ah, Gentleman's Jack. Yeah, when you get the squattish taste in your mouth. Oh, yes. Oh, remember. Jesus turned water into wine and rednecks turned water into shine. Mm -mm. I almost hate being single because then I have a reason to buy wine. <laughs> but then again, <laughs> I'll just see what the chick wants and I'll buy it anyway. <laughs> like one candy gram, she asked for some rock peach. And she made us drinks, and boy, we were tore the fuck up. Oh, you like that Jamison, huh? You like that rum? Oh, that crack and spice, black spice rum is really good, by the way. Oh, we got some Bacardi for the party. Oh, gentleman Jack. <laughs> she was a firefighter, so most chicks like vodkas. Most chicks like vodkas. Who's ready for the cigar lounge? I am. And in case you think I'm expensive, look at the prices of this. Huh? <laughs> nah. He asked me if I lift a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to give this I'm going to give this a try Let you know
So that's what we got. Don't tell BGS. <laughs> How you doing? Um, about to have a happy night. <laughs> Appreciate it. Gotta love the law enforcement discounts. Oh yeah. Every little bit helps, right? Oh yeah. Appreciate it. I have been better. Great, great, great. It's funny, my subscribers are asking. Ask them if they got Roku Jin from Japan. <laughs> we might. We're starting to get a lot of stuff. I'm gonna I'm gonna do some taste testing of that. Finally, it's like our age, like our age section. Yeah. I want to get into some of those um, Asian whiskeys, you know, like. Oh yeah, represent. Uh, I'll just take it. Thank you. And you boxed them up for you. Thanks, your love. Uh, and let me know when y'all get that. They hit that um, like that Asian whiskey. I want to try that. I'm gonna do a taste test, you know, on my on my YouTube channel. <laughs> I'm gonna do it with the pinky up, of course. Uh, All right, man. Hey, I'm hoping to get the hell away from here. <laughs> Make some dreams happen. No hell. <laughs> oh man, it's good to see retired officers doing what they love to do. Gives me hope. Gives me hope. <laughs> Stacking up for the next lockdown. I could be. I could be. I could be. So, <laughs> I know if BGS sees this video, he's going to laugh his ass off. Like this motherfucker went out there and bought a bushel of liquor. Which in the back seat. <sighs> Don't forget to hit the hit the tip jaw, you know. <laughs> hit the tip jaw, baby. Striking up. Keep telling y'all where that money be going. <laughs> that cognac and cigars don't buy themselves. Oh, yeah. For people who say, oh, how long you been an alcoholic? My question is, how long you been a nosy bitch? <laughs> <laughs> This weekend, I'm going to drink good. I'm going to smoke good. I'm going to look good. I'm going to feel good. Woo! Now we're going to take a little trip and our rocket ship over to the cigar lounge. I think I might stop over to Dave's over. Uh... Matter of fact, I'm going to stop over to Dave's cigar. Da Excuse me, not Dave's. Dan Cigars. On Pulaski Highway in the Golden Ring area, Rosedale, baby. But yeah, 
I'm gonna get back on the on the little topic for a second. A lot of you guys need to make sure, and I'm gonna say this to the ladies: make sure you have a man with a purpose. Make sure you have a man with a purpose and be able and be able to inspire him. Don't push him, but inspire. Men, have a woman who's gonna be ten toes down for you. I've been with women when I've been broke as a joke. As soon as they get paid, they're like, baby, follow me to the gas station in case I get stopped. I'm like, shit, you know, I ain't got gas either. And you know what she would do? She would give me two, $250 in, in cash in hand, fill my tank up, fill her tank up, and kiss me later and say, I'm going to cook for you and fuck your brains out later tonight. What, what more can you ask? You know, and, and when you have somebody that supportive, you will go, you will go and break heaven and earth just to please that woman. You got to have somebody who's 10 toes for you. So much so that even when you break up, I have girlfriends who I broke up with who will still take me out for Father's Day or birthdays. Still. There might even be some trying to get me back. You got to find that person who's 10 toes down, man. And women. But in our community, a lot of the dudes, for some reason, don't think that you're supposed to give that woman any purpose. That's what men are supposed to do for women. You give her purpose. You give her kids. You give her your last name. You give her purpose. I'm a father bowling blood. Of course I watched the little Einsteins. Especially when you when you mix it with Baltimore club music. That should be rocking. Gonna take a trip <laughs> in a little rocket ship. I want y'all to play that <laughs> as soon as I end. Play the Baltimore club music of little Einstein's thing. <laughs> I bet you. I bet you $10 right now you ass, your ass is gonna be dancing. That should be rocking. Like hell. Start a damn party off of your damn kids' favorite uh favorite learning channel like program or some shit. But I'm gonna say it. It's like you can't always say your leadership. See the one thing about being in command in something, someone must accept your leadership first. Too many men claim to be alpha, but you're leading with stuff that is not alpha. You can't knock the next man. You should be one of those guys that if you see your man's talking to a chick, you back off. You let him do his thing. You don't undercut him. Excuse me. Oh, driving, driving, driving. And it's raining. Good God. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> so little Einstein is one of my son's favorites. Well, my son's 14 now, so he likes watching um he likes watching a lot of anime. Like we'll watch uh when my ha my hero academia before the um pandemic. We will wake up early Saturday and watch my hero. That's well, pouring down a little bit. And we would just watch that. And every Friday night, we will watch Dragon Ball Super on either Funimation or Country Roll. Another, um, another thing I noticed he likes watching, he likes Vampire Diaries and a spinoff called The Originals. And he likes all them silly ass people on YouTube <laughs> who do the silly ass videos. So it is what it is. Holy pouring down like a motherfucker, Batman. 
Um, I've finished season five. I'm going to give it a looky loo again. I wish I could. I, I, I got to look at my Funimation to see if it's Let's see if it's what I got to look at off automation to make sure I paid the damn bill. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I got to go see how, you know, if they dubbed all the stuff from season five yet. <laughs> Um, I noticed that they're going to do the big showdown. They haven't done the house yet. I know they introduced Hawks from last season, that last few episodes of the season four, going into five, and how Hawk is like a double agent for the heroes. So, yeah. All Might versus Charles Faulkner. Which one? The skinny one? Because I don't know if I got too much of a chance against the big one. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha Never fear, because I am here. <laughs> Young Migdoria. <laughs> I like All Might. I think I'm going to lift weights really, 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 really heavy and get really swole and big, and I'm going to dress up as All Might at Blurricon or something. You know, right now, I'm not all might, but I'm just all right. <laughs> oh, my goodness, this pouring down crazy. Put your floodlights on, baby. Uh, so what else do y'all want to talk about? Because we didn't do the question and the answer thing either. And I like giving people choices with those. Ask me a question that, that was burning on your mind that you want to know the answer. Go ahead. I dare you. <laughs> I dare you. Because after the cigar, I think I'm going to let everybody go. wish there were more closer places I would actually go to I actually go to different cigar shops for different cigars but everybody knows you know I need my San Cristobal Colossals and my um, LX LFDs and it's really hard to find both in one store except this one I mean I'll smoke other things like I think a Java mint chocolate is a beautiful cigar especially in the morning Baltimore All Might is here. <laughs> Never fear. The guy swinging his mighty ass bantoon is here. Oh, man. It's funny because they're all my friends who work for the city and they see another cop and they're like, you know a guy named Charles Faulkner? I was like, oh, we know Faulkner. His legend speaks of itself. Hmm. Have I prepared my son for the current dating climate? Um, I think we don't really talk about girls like that, like that. Not yet. You know, it's his temperament, you know, when he's ready to talk, we'll talk. But him and his best friend a few years ago in the in the barber shop, when me and the barber, my buddy who passed away from COVID, unfortunately, shout out to Blurry Blunt, greatest barber in America, baby. Um, may he rest in peace, paradise, and power. We were having a conversation about women, and they said the only thing women can give you, and both of them said in unison, a lot of headaches. So he's been prepared, especially some of the conversations we did have about women. He's been prepared. And I never preach to him about any hatred because I don't preach about it at all. 
but I'm very truthful. And what happens is that a lot of people out there may not like your truth. The <laughs> neighbor said, Charles Falter, if there was a better football game than Madden, would you play that instead, considering how EA has gone stagnant? Um, in all actuality, I would still play it, but I would also give the other game a try because um, I'm starting to see some janky shit, and it's always janky shit when Madden first come out. The real problem is that once you get used to that janky shit and they go in there and do a patch and correct it, there's there's something that they'll boost up and they'll turn down for others and people will still complain about the game. Well, you took off this janky shit and now the wide receivers are in incredible order or the cornerback catch like fucking uh like catch everything like loot or the running backs are unstoppable. The juke move, you can't react. I mean, you're supposed to learn how to react, adapt, and adapt and overcome in any game or any simulation, which a video game is. So I think a lot of people just do it out of just being stupid, man. Mm. But I would play that other game just to give it a try. If it's better than Madden, I would put Madden down. As long as it has a very similar playing format, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly, but, you know, it's got to be something where I can still throw the receiver one, two, three, four. Give me something. <laughs> as long as it still has that format, I'll be really, I would really comfortable. But give me some, um, Give me, give me some really good playing and, and a little bit more realistic. Like, when I play Ultimate Team, you got backup quarterbacks, backup receivers, backup linemen, but nobody gets injured. No, I mean, nobody gets injured in real life, but it, it kind of takes away from the game. What's the point of having backups? Like, if I take out your quarterback and rock him with a, with a good hit, he should be out for at least a quarter or something. And then let's see how you overcome it. <laughs> Come on, keep coming with the questions and I'll answer them. Keep coming with the questions. And I'll try to answer them. As safely as I can once I hit a red light. <laughs> Charles fought the hero name. Blockbuster. Quirk. Status amplification grants the user to amplify all physical capabilities to superhero levels, turning him into literal super bad. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh man, uh, usually for me, that's called Kanye <laughs> or some type of caffeine stimulant. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, shout out to Lee Clifton, just drove by it. Well, both Lee Clifton's the new and the old. I remember last year, um, was it pre-COVID? Yeah, it was pre-COVID. It was before I got hurt, too, and we had to do the Lee Clifton walk around. And we had to, uh, you know, you had people who graduate back in the 70s. I believe it started in 1970, 75, somewhere like that. And you had original class from the original class of Lee Clifton graduates. You had my class, which was 2000. Yes, I've been out of school for 22 years. Fuck you. I'm um, 21. Sorry. Fuck you again. But it's surreal when you actually think about that. Like, I've been out, out of school long enough for an adult child to drink. <laughs> But yet, I still have people on YouTube thinking that I'm not experienced about women, life, raising children, being in relationships, working a career. Like, where the fuck do they find these people, y'all?
blockbuster cartoon show. <laughs> the Baltimore blockbuster. Oh, man. Come on, give me the questions. Give me some hard questions you want to answer. Hard questions. After I watch the Doom film, I will do a review of it. Yes, I will. I will watch it. I will examine it. I will um, I will take it apart. And I will give you my thoughts of Doom. And I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to do some movie reviews of movies that came out. Like, I'm going to give you a review of Man of Steel, um, Captain America Winter Soldier, even video game reviews. I'm trying to get my house set up where I could actually do some taste testing, cigar testing, and, you know, love and live life. For good sakes, come up the goddamn street, please. Can you see yourself on an episode of Cops? Um, unfortunately, Cops haven't been in our neck of the woods for about, what, 25, almost 30 years? 25, 30 years. They tried it one time. I guess we whipped the guy's ass too badly or something happened and they never came back again. Or it might have just got too real. Who knows? <laughs> Oh, okay. Come on with the questions. Keep going. Keep going. You put them up, I knock them down. Yes, E equals MZ squared. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so I do have to ask this one question. What type of content would you like to hear in the near future? Would you want to hear some about the military, policing, relationships, fitness? What subjects would you like to hear my opinion or my expertise about? Hmm. Look at this, the youngest in charge, baby. Hey, right, what's up, fam? I'm not too away from new, not too far away from my mom's house. I'm little stuff. I wonder if she cooked today. <laughs> yes, I'm one of those sides. Fuck y'all. Well, then again, if me and my son come up there, she's gonna feed us anyway. She's one of those mothers. It actually was a beautiful day today, and it's all rainy and shit, and I got to go out to my homeboy's ching dig. He got a table out there. It's Mingle Mondays where all the big butt girls are. Huh! I got some new jeans, some new kicks. I'm not wearing my new kicks in. <laughs> okay? <laughs> okay? What's the what are the requirements do you judge to make a person multifaceted? Well, the 
the, the way you judge a person being multifaceted is one, do they have an appetite for knowledge in various subjects? If that person only wants to learn one thing or stay narrow minded, they cannot be multifaceted by definition. If that person can fit in many different spaces, meaning I'll take myself, I can fit at a in a jock arena because like I said on one of my um earlier live streams, I can't shit on a guy like, you know, like like you know, some of these weightlifters and um what's the dude um goddamn like Derek Jackson. If I met Derek Jackson, especially in a gym, we would just be chilling, talking about women, lifting the heaviest weights we can. You know, we will be workout buddies or something, and eventually we'll probably just hang out, drink. We're like, yo, I got this ching dig. I want you to come. Okay, cool. You know, I can't knock him, even though anybody who has a brain knows that he was selling a product and he got caught up with his own with his own mess. I could fit somewhere in the gamer, the geek community, like Blurricon. I was sitting there with a tattoo artist smoking his weed and we were talking about shit. He bought us, he bought a cigar from me. I gave it to him. I said, Hey, you don't even need to give me money. Just make sure you do some kindness for somebody else. And he said, I got you. We were listening to music and come to find out he's from Baltimore as well. You know, you can fit in many different spaces. Also, if you're comfortable in those spaces, <laughs> Like, I could be up there playing video games all day with my son at BlurCon. He will go. I will give him some money. He'll go get something to eat. He'll go get some um, souvenirs. He'll do it all. It's like my son. He He's one of those kids. Uh, excuse me. He's one of those kids who can make friends with damn near anybody. If my son can't make friends with you, you're probably an asshole to begin with anyway. So, here, here. You got to be comfortable in them spaces. You got to be hungry for knowledge from different subjects. You have to be open-minded as a motherfucker because when I know that I like comic books and cosplay and other shit, I know that there's a good contingent of people in the LGBT community and you know I'll speak to anybody with a good conversation I don't give a damn who you go to bed with hell some of the cool ones were gay you would never know who was gay there <laughs> unless you see them with their boyfriend or their girlfriend you see you will also see some dudes who will hug the block but they Goku or Naruto fans I mean some one guy was like, yo, I was watching Fist of the North Star, my nigga. Yeah, shit was rocking, wasn't it? I love that in Project Echo, by the way. But to be multifaceted, you got to be a few of those things. Uh, police work, military and police work. Huh? Emergency services. Domestic violence, in particular, false report. Dealing with psychopathic, narcissistic, psychopathic... <laughs> It's like and borderline for you. Oh, they're not borderline if they're in that. What's my uh, opinion about Bakugo's behavior, his family? Um, I don't know if you didn't notice, Bakugo is basically the black male of the whole series. He's the black male of the whole series. And if you really think about it, Deku, I mean, he had to show something, but he pretty much got handed white privilege. <laughs> uh, eat, eat my, and just my hair of white privilege and power. So when we look at these characters, especially Bakugo, you notice his mom is very domineering. I mean, she's very polite, but she's very domineering, and the dad is very passive. And he's never challenging towards his wife. 
He's never abrasive towards his wife. He's never even, um, dare I say it, masculine towards his wife. And that tends to be a sore spot subject for a lot of uh, a lot of young men in the black community because you find yourself trying to find your way, trying to find your masculinity beat, and here's your mom just browbeating the masculinity out of you. So when you see a character like Bakugo, he's looking to find who he is. He's the reason why he's so angry is because he's frustrated. He wants to be a self-made man, but does not realize that some everybody needs help. Everybody's not going to be good at everything. And I think that's a trope for a lot of black young men. They try to be great at everything, and it's impossible too. Yep, so that's my take on Bakugo. Well, I'm loving the questions. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And by the way, we're almost at the cigar shop. <laughs> and I think, and, and just to answer your question about his behavior, I think he, I think he lashes out at the world because he really doesn't like himself. He really puts himself on a pedestal and he never ever, every time you see him when he's laid back and people notice it, he gets abrasive because he takes that as being weak. And he really does care in his own way about his classmates because if you fuck with them, you fucking with him. But he doesn't want it to come off as soft. It's like a begrudging respect, I guess. <laughs> well, one, I think he should be able to, you know, when he sweats out of his hands. He should actually be able to fire little projectiles with more of a more of an accuracy from his gauntlets. I think he should also have, you know, rocket boosters for on his feet, you know, where he basically fuels himself, fuels the uh, boots and the rockets by his own sweat. So hey, I think those would be great. <laughs> oh, don't worry, you're always welcome here. Um, Marcus Love Experience. We're just doing a Q&A session before I get to the cigar shop. And hopefully there's no traffic preventing me from getting to the cigar shop. Oh, man. So we're just doing a Q&A. People are asking me questions. So I'm going to ask my viewers this. What do you think about the, the back and forth that me and Anton had? What was your take on it? I think that would be interesting for those of you who actually seen it. What was your take on the back and forth we had. And and notice I never really asked about that because, you know, I care less what the guy does. What he eats, I don't shit. What he fucks, I don't nut. Sorry. Um, probably a couple of LFD San Crystal balls. I might get a couple of flavored cigars as well. Give a pack to my boy, so you know for his birthday and shit.
I'm probably, as a matter of fact, when I get there, I'm going to show you the cigars. <laughs> You gotta pick your liquor out and your cigar very well and match them together. Oh, uh, what's my favorite comic books? Currently, um, I've always loved teen books like Justice League and Avengers. I love that dynamic. I'm loving where they're pointing Thor so far. Um, and Mortal Hulk was interesting for a bit. Superman was, you know, one of my favorites of all time. I liked, I liked it when they did the re, the rebirth, and it was him and his son and teaching his son about his responsibility and powers and not any of this LGBT bullshit because I think they're trying to kill off all our heroes. Um, I like the Crush and Lobo miniseries they got on. I think they should really develop Crush. If they really want to promote LGBT characters, Crush is a brand new character. And I and I like the way that, you know, she plays the awkward superpower girl for her and her girlfriend, but you know, popular media doesn't want to be on shit that makes sense. Um I was I was loving Captain America or Secret War when they had the um, Hydra Cap. So, hmm. X-Men, and as much as I love the X-Men, you know, the Chris, Chris Claremont run, the 92 series, the cartoon series, I, I was in it, but X-Men sometimes will take you down and it'll take you out. And it's hard to get that interest back in it some days. Very hard. But I want more about um, I'm trying to get into um, Static and also Icon and Rocket as well. Because they're bringing back the, the Dakota-verse. I think that will be interesting. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, finally made it to the parking lot to the cigar lounge where all the great men of might meet to smoke a good stogie. <laughs> hmm, they're hiring. I may take them up on this offer. <laughs> it's waning. It's waning. <clears throat> Jeez. Note to self. Always wear a hoodie. Harry. Oh. Ah, uh, smell that cigar lounge. How you doing? Give me one second, use the restroom, then I'll go to the cigars.
Yep, I'm back. Let's go see what these cigars look like. Here we go. I wonder how the ventilation system of a typical cigar is set up. Well, there's one of the humidors. By the way, all hail the ledger, Ray Lewis. Rocky Pastels. So, you know, when you <laughs> get a lot of cigars. Now, one of my favorite brands. Huh, the long ones are out. Oh, shit. I got to get the short ones. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't see, can you? LFD, baby. LFD. They still carry more. Get two more just in case. How you doing? The mobile a sampler pack. By the way, folks, these are the flavor ones. Look at the size of those Texas. Here's some of the flavor ones here. I love the Black Forest. Got a couple of these. They have vanilla, chocolate. Huh? Um, Alex Bradley's, I think they're over here. Oh, no. I'm just used to come here so goddamn much sometimes. I think they're about somewhere. No, these are the Astons. Bradley's are usually around this area. Huh? Oh, this is light. That's light. Yeah, it's like I'm known to spend three, two to three. Yeah, I've been known to do that. <laughs> I just hate re upping. Oh, yeah, San Cristobal. This is San Cristobal. San Cristobal. Another version. Get the revelations. Uh, basically, those are like the ones that are like these, but not perfectly cut. They're good. It's like, you know, how you have factory second t-shirts. Same system. They're still good. Make sure, see if they still have the brand, because I know some brands might have went out. Oh, he comes here a lot. This is my 
Okay. Right. See if the guy at the desk, he might know where it is because I usually see it around this area. That's it, they still got them in stock. Let me see. Damn. Wait a minute. You're sporting a Liverpool FC? Hey, I like Liverpool. <laughs> Am I trying to impersonate Shaw Quarter? One does not simply imitate the original Bourne, James Bourne. <laughs> What's a good beginner cigar? Um, Ashton's. These. They're not that bold. They're good. See, the way that I got turned on to cigars, I was smoking the bold one first. Oh, I got him, huh? Matt Sherman's. Oh, you found a Nats or the... I'm sorry? You found a Nats? Yeah. What was that? Oh, the, the um, cigars you're looking for. Yep. Oh, man. Cool. Sweet. Thanks, man. All right. All right. Uh, oh, man. Let me see. Uh, <laughs> um, the character in the comics doesn't suck, but the movie character is basically a staunch feminist and that's what makes it suck so you know they always gotta inject a little bit of feminism and shit so that's what makes it suck I was get a couple of job events too That's the only bad thing when your friends develop their own tastes and they don't necessarily smoke what you smoke. It's hard to pick it out for them. I'm just a good friend. <laughs> Can't find my big bowl gauge cigars. I'll get a couple of these. And where did I put the shit that I got, my boy? That's what happens when you get excited and shit.
Hmm. But you know, about to get out of here. I'm going to hit you guys up later. Oh, peace.